Hello again everyone and welcome back to the Fusion Industry Association. My name is Jasmine Mund and I'm a mechanical design engineer with a key interest in the fusion industry. Today is Wednesday the 14th of May 2025 and I'm here to give you your fusion news update of the week. And now on to our key headlines for today's episode. 1. ITA completes fusion supermagnet. 2. University of Texas led team solves a big problem for fusion energy. 3. Groups collaborate on projects for fusion energy in Germany. 4. Is China pulling ahead in the quest for fusion energy? And make sure you stay till the end because as usual I have quite a few interesting bonus stories that you definitely don't want to miss out on. 1. ITA completes fusion super magnet. First up is an article about the ITA project reaching another significant milestone by completing the assembly of its central solenoid from Nuclear Engineering International. Manufactured in the US and transported to France in segments, this supermagnet is the most powerful pulsed superconducting magnet ever built. At 13 metres tall and weighing 1,000 tonnes, the central solenoid is engineered to generate magnetic fields of up to 13 Tesla, strong enough to lift an aircraft carrier. It will play a pivotal role in initiating and sustaining the plasma necessary for fusion reactions. The assembly was a complex engineering challenge involving precision cryogenics, superconducting cable winding and meticulous integration with ITER's massive tokamak structure. Engineers from General Atomics, ITER and partner nations coordinated the final installation, which was completed ahead of schedule. This magnet is crucial for ITER's mission to produce 500 megawatts of fusion power from just 50 megawatts of input. The tenfold energy gain is intended to prove that fusion can become a viable, scalable energy solution. ITER's progress brings us closer to a future of abundant carbon-free energy. The successful completion of the central solenoid is not just a technical achievement, it's a beacon of international collaboration and proof that fusion energy is more than just a scientific dream. It's becoming a reality. 2. University of Texas-led team solves a big problem for fusion energy. Our second story comes from UT News, where in a landmark achievement, physicists at the University of Texas at Austin have solved a theoretical problem that has hindered fusion research for nearly 70 years. Their work enables far more accurate modelling of particle behaviour in stellarated type fusion technology, paving the way for improved plasma confinement and more efficient designs. For decades, scientists have known that confining high energy particles in the complex magnetic geometry of stellarators was a major challenge. The UT-led team, in collaboration with FIA member Type 1 Energy and Los Alamos National Lab, has now developed a new mathematical framework to resolve inconsistencies in particle confinement predictions. Josh Burby, assistant professor of physics at UT and lead author, said, What's most exciting is that we're solving something that's been an open problem for almost 70 years. Their solution dramatically speeds up the process of designing optimised stellarator shapes, allowing supercomputers to simulate configurations in minutes instead of days. This means new fusion concepts can be tested and refined faster, reducing costs and shortening development timelines. This breakthrough improves the viability of stellarators, a promising but underutilised class of fusion devices that offer steady state operation and reduced turbulence. The UT team's work represents a turning point in stellarator development and could spark renewed interest and investment in this particular architecture. Three, groups collaborate on projects for fusion energy in Germany. Next up is an article on PowerMag about fusion efforts in Germany and their gain in momentum as major scientific institutions and private sector partners form new alliances to advance fusion device development. Led by the Max Planck Institute for Plasma Physics, the collaboration brings together research institutes, energy companies and startup innovators to accelerate fusion research and development. The initiative will focus on next-gen fusion plant components, materials testing and integrating renewable technologies with future fusion grids. Germany's fusion roadmap is ambitious, aiming to lead in both the science and commercial deployment of fusion energy within Europe. One notable participant, the Technical University of Munich, will focus on computational modelling and diagnostics, while private firms are contributing advanced manufacturing and robotics experience. Their shared goal is to translate theoretical progress into buildable, scalable fusion systems. A project spokesperson said, This is about pooling Germany's exceptional scientific and industrial capacity to create a fast-track path to fusion deployment. The collaboration strengthens Europe's position in the global fusion race, 
aligning with the broader EU goals for carbon neutrality and energy independence. Germany's move reflects a growing recognition that no single entity can deliver fusion alone. It requires teamwork, investment and a shared vision for clean energy. 4. Is China pulling ahead in the quest for fusion energy? Finally, we have a story from IEEE Spectrum about how China continues to make bold strides in fusion research, with recent announcements highlighting its growing lead in global research and development. The country has achieved a new milestone at its Experimental Advanced Superconducting Tokamak, or EAST, holding a 158 million degrees Celsius plasma for over 1,000 seconds, breaking global records for temperature and stability. China's government has outlined a clear fusion roadmap to complete an industrial prototype device by 2035 and begin commercial operation by 2050. Backed by vast infrastructure and state investment, these targets appear increasingly realistic. In addition to East, China is building new experimental plants and expanding international partnerships, particularly through ITER. Chinese universities are also producing a rising share of fusion talent and research publications. While critics question whether these milestones are more symbolic than practical, many agree that China's consistent funding and top-down policy support are driving real progress. If successful, China's fusion programmes could place it at the centre of the global clean energy transition. The implications are huge. Fusion energy could provide decades of low-carbon baseload power free from the constraints of fossil fuels. As the international fusion community watches closely, China's momentum is a signal that the race towards commercial fusion is intensifying, and everyone has something to gain from the competition. And now, as promised, here are the bonuses. First up, we have a story from the UK government website about British musician and comedian Bill Bailey visiting the UK Atomic Energy Authority's Cullum campus to discuss fusion energy. His engagement definitely highlights the growing public interest and support for fusion as a clean energy source. Secondly is a bonus about how FIA member General Fusion has announced layoffs, citing unforeseen financial challenges, despite progress in their technology. This development underscores the financial hurdles that fusion startups can face, emphasising the need for sustained investment in fusion research. Linking to that bonus is an opinion piece in The Hill that argues that the United States must urgently ramp up investment and policy support to stay competitive in the global fusion race. With China and Europe accelerating their programmes, the article highlights Fusion's potential for clean energy leadership and economic growth. It calls on the US lawmakers to back Fusion startups and scale domestic efforts to ensure America remains at the forefront of energy innovation. Next up is a report from the Institute of Materials, Minerals and Mining, or IOM3. The report is about a new microscopy method which enables scientists to track radiation damage in unprecedented detail identifying tiny structural defects that would previously have gone unnoticed. The technique also allows for real-time tracking of how materials change over time, giving researchers a dynamic tool to test innovations before they're deployed in future commercial plants. And finally, I have a bonus in the form of a YouTube video where the BBC provides an inside look at Fuse's Montreal site, showcasing efforts to bring nuclear fusion from the lab to the commercial energy market. This feature highlights the technological advancements and challenges in making fusion a practical energy source. And that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the episode. If you did, don't forget to drop a like, comment or subscribe. If you'd like to know more about any of the stories or bonuses mentioned today, as always, the links will be in the description below. And you can follow our Fusion News Extra podcast for a more in-depth look into the topic of fusion energy. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.